just walking over here, I live on Columbia Street, not, I guess it's not officially Red, Red Hook, but it's Columbia Street Waterfront District. I live on the Brooklyn Waterfront. And uh, I actually wrote a book called Birding at the Bridge in Search of Every Bird on the Brooklyn Waterfront. Now, I will tell you, I wasn't in search of every bird on the Brooklyn Waterfront. I was in search of every bird in Brooklyn Bridge Park. But the publisher wanted the title, so, you know, I love the cover, so I wasn't going to argue, you know. Um, but there are a lot of birds around the Brooklyn Waterfront, a lot of bird diversity here. Um, but, you know, there are also some surprises on the bridge. So this is a red-bellied woodpecker that landed on the Brooklyn Bridge under it and was just pecked away and then realized it was in the wrong spot after about a minute and flew off. But luckily, I was quick with the camera. Um, so... I, I work for Cornell Lab of Ornithology. I'm a web developer for a citizen science project called eBird. And we have a lot of projects at the lab. I also work, work uh, with birdcast.info. It predicts migration. It can give you a migration forecast. And I'm also what's called a patch birder. A patch birder is a term coined uh, mostly in the UK, but it's basically you're looking for birds in the same location most days of the week. And if it's close to where you live, it's easy to get out there for 15 minutes, get out there whenever you have time, or like yesterday I was there eight hours. But um, so this, so Brooklyn Bridge Park is my patch. Um, I also come down here a lot, and I'll be mentioning a couple of the great things I've seen down here. Um, and I mostly bird south of the Brooklyn Bridge. And the green home icon, that's where I live. <laughs> so um, most of the birds I've seen in Brooklyn Bridge Park, I've seen 182, have been seen at Pier 1, but really all of these piers and the habitats are really picking up that they were, a lot of them were more recent than Pier 1. Pier 1 has the most mature trees, um, uh, and there's some rare birds. Pier 3's been really great too. This is a view of Pier 1 from the Brooklyn Bridge, and you wouldn't think that you you know, over 100 species have been seen in this little patch, right? But when you're down in it, it's like, wow, you know, you think you feel like you're in the woods, you know, but it's actually really small. But um, I'll talk about why these birds stop here in a second. Um, but that's kind of my background, what I do. And what I'm going to be talking about in the next half hour is, you know, I'm going to introduce you to some birds of the Brooklyn waterfront. Uh, the birds that uh, kind of are expected here and some that are some surprises. And then uh, how do you find these birds? You know, you may be walking around and seeing nothing. I mean, I did, I did this happen to me when I started. So um, it's, there are some tips and resources that can help you experience the waterfront birds or birds wherever you go. Um, I'm also gonna talk about how to find the best spots to look for birds on the waterfront and, and name a few of those. So, the, what I love about birding, uh, looking for birds on the Brooklyn waterfront are the views. I mean, oh my gosh, what an amazing setting, right? You see the gulls come to roost here at sunset at Brooklyn Bridge Park. Um, this was taken in Brooklyn Bridge Park. It almost looks like it could have been taken right out the door. Um, but you would never expect that over 200 species of birds, way more than that actually, have been spotted on the Brooklyn waterfront. Now, you may be saying, well, are, where are these birds? If we go out, are we going to see 200 right now? No, we're not. Most of these are migrating birds. So migration happens along these flyways, and we're on the Atlantic Flyway. So when birds fly through New York City, they're hungry, they're tired, they, they need a place to rest and fuel up. And when they see these green patches or water you know, along, along the waterfront, they will make a pit stop to fuel up and hang out. So during migration, they drop in to our pocket parks, waterfront parks, and we can see them. It's amazing. So I'm gonna show you photos of some of these birds. Um, and But to experience bird migration, this is the right time. It's just started. It's gonna peak in May because the birds are in a hurry to get to their nesting locations. Some of these locations are in the city, but the bulk of these birds, as I'm saying, they pass through. They go further north or they go on the outskirts of the city, but they do stop on their way. But they're in a hurry in spring, which is why it's a little shorter for the migration period. In fall, which I like better because it's, it's longer, the birds stay longer, sometimes up to a week. Um, but the interesting thing is a lot of the birds have different plumages in fall, which takes less energy and resources because they're not trying to attract a mate. So a lot of the plumage may be duller in the males 
I'll take it. I, I like just hanging out with the birds longer. Um, so, what kind of birds do we have here along the waterfront? Well, of course we have pigeons, right? That is a pigeon. But sometimes the most you know common birds do crazy things. And I caught this bird stretching, and it went into a turkey pose. But uh, especially lately, you know, with the winter, we get a lot, a lot of really cool ducks. And these ducks are ones you can see out here, right along the waterfront. Um, the bufflehead duck is a little diving duck. It kind of looks like a toy duck. This is the male, um, and it'll it'll dive for crustaceans and mollusks, and then resurface. And it kind of jumps up. It literally looks like a rubber ducky when it comes up to the surface. Um, these diving ducks are only here during the winter. They they don't hang out in the summer. They go up north uh, for breeding season. But another diving duck is this red-breasted merganser, also um, really different looking. It's got a serrated bill. It, it goes for crustaceans too. So uh, what's cool is if you're out here during in the winter and you look around, you may see nothing, but then things might start popping up because these are you know diving ducks. Um, the dabbling ducks, like the mallards and American black ducks, which are here, um, they kind of upend and they stick their rear end out of the water. They're not really diving. Brant geese are also here, uh, mostly during the winter, some sometimes stay around, but this is one of my favorite photos from my book, Birding at the Bridge. It was a lucky shot. I was out on the end of a pier and just happened to get this. Now I know um, you can stage it, right? You could stay by the, by the statue or by the bridge and try to get photos of birds as they pass or perch. But um, believe it or not, one of the largest roosts in, in probably in New York City, definitely in Brooklyn, for gulls is in Brooklyn Bridge Park at the marina. And this is a video of it. So during the winter, we've got like 4,000 ring-billed gulls roosting at the marina at night. They, they arrive at sunset and it's like, it's a snowstorm. Sometimes they'll, they'll move you know, from one section of the platforms to another and it's just absolutely gorgeous and it's loud. So at night, it's neat to walk through and uh, check them out. And you can see, yeah, the big cube is right above it. Um, common tern is a, is a migrating waterfront bird that is going to be getting here soon and it's going to spend the summer with us. Uh, these birds, uh, they nest out at Governor's Island and they visit, like a lot of times on the end of Van Brunner Pier, they'll be there hanging out, you'll see them flying overhead, um, and they hunt little sardines and their nests are very vulnerable. They, they do nest on beaches, but also here they nest on dilapidated piers like, and they'll close off a section of Governor's Island. They don't really have a nest. It's like on the ground, you know, like they, they put shells and dust and they, they're basically laying eggs right on the bare ground. So um, that's why they, they need to be protected nesting sites. Uh, now the black crowned night heron is a very common bird right around here, right around uh, Van Brent Pier. Uh, they will, I mean, you can kind of catch them deep into winter, but also in the spring, you will be seeing more of them. They breed here. So uh, a lot of times you can see them uh, in, in back on the, where the boats are over there, also all along the waterfront. And these birds roost during the day usually. Like this was pretty active, but usually they'll rest and they'll mostly hunt at night. But uh, this photo was taken out where we're gonna go for a walk in a little bit out at Erie Basin Park by Ikea. And that's the bird right there, the flat crown night heron. And then this is at Brooklyn Bridge Park. Can anyone see this? It's tough to find the heron. But they do hunt at night and it's right here. That little dot, it's a black crown night heron. But um, I love to go walking along the waterfront at night. And Brooklyn Bridge Park is relatively safe at night. And um, you can see you know, these birds and also other birds that are foraging in the lit areas. Like, unfortunately, you know, this is quite a little bit of light pollution here, but you do get birds foraging at night. It's probably not great for the birds, but it's, it's interesting to watch them. Um, so those are kind of expected. We expect to see, you know, a lot of ducks, pigeons, things like that along the waterfront, okay? Now the unexpected, apart from this little yellow warbler here, are these wood warblers. So wood warblers, uh, the majority of these are only insect eaters, okay? They don't eat seeds or anything like this. So, um, and a lot of them, uh, they, during the winter, they're in South America, the Caribbean, Mexico, or the Southern US, depending on the species. 
Um, the common yellow throat is the most common war wood warbler in North America. And this forage is very low, it's easy to see. And the reason I love this photo is because this is kind of how you'll see it, you know, it hides. You could be walking right by some shrubs, you know, in, in a local waterfront park and it will be there and it's hard to tell, right? It does have a beautiful song in the summer. It goes, I mean, in the spring and summer, it goes witchy, 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 like that. Uh, so you can hear it, uh, and that's a great way to find birds, is just following sounds. Even if you don't know what it is, you follow the sound, and then you can see this amazing bird foraging. Now this bird winters in South America, including Colombia. It's a scarlet tanager. This uh, was taken in Brooklyn Bridge Park. There, there was an apple in the middle of the lawn, and um, I sat down on the lawn and photographed this bird, and people walking by saw me before they saw the bird, even as bright as this bird is, they're like, what is she taking a photo of? And once they realized it, like a crowd formed wow. and they were taking photos too, and it was amazing. Usually they're not that much out in the open, but this was pretty cool. So uh, along the waterfront, if you take a closer look during the periods I mentioned, especially the migration period, which is happening now, peaks in May, and then in the fall, September, October, you can see a lot of these birds. This bird is not gonna look like this in the fall. This is one of those birds that's more muted. It's gonna be yellowish with black wings. Uh, this is the male. Baltimore Orioles are another bird that visits uh, a lot of our parks here. Uh, and they, they love to pierce the base of flowers and they're nectar robbers. Um, hummingbirds will also do that too. And hummingbirds also feed on these flowers. I've seen them fighting occasionally. Uh, Red-eyed vireo is a, another migrating bird. This one's in a sweet bay in Magnolia. Um, a lot of these, the waterfront parks are, uh, you know, fostering these native habitats with a lot of native prairie grasses and native trees like this sweet bay Magnolia, which is one of my favorites. It's just gorgeous. And the more these places pop up and these, these micro habitats get developed, the birds keep, you know, more and more birds keep stopping by and using these habitats. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, here's one that I was not seeing in, in uh, my patch until I've been birding it five or six years, a blue wing warbler. And this photo, I don't know if you can tell from the perspective, but it was basically below my knees, right at my feet in a flower field at Pier 6. Other birds, chestnut sided warbler. This one, not as colorful, but it's a favorite. One actually stayed during the winter. It walks like a mini chicken. Uh, this is also a warbler, and black and white warbler. Um, this is another one that forages low uh, in the shrubs, and it kind of creeps up trees, like uh, kind of like woodpecker. Like uh, sometimes it'll be on posts and things like that, or ro even rocks. Now. What's cool about the waterfront and a lot of these new parks popping up is that we have a lot of young trees, okay? They're not really mature, tall trees, which makes it easier on the neck if you're birding, but also some of these birds that are stopping by that would normally forage way high in a tree, they sometimes have no choice but to forage lower, right? So see these trees here, these are, these are not very high and they're pretty sparse. And this was the first place I saw a black Bernian warbler in May 2020. And this is one of those warblers that everybody wants to see. And I had seen it in Prospect Park and it was so high up. It was like, wow, I can barely see it. But in Brooklyn Bridge Park, you know, these new pocket parks with the young trees, it stopped and it, it actually had perched really low, like right about here, that enabled me to get this great photo. So what about, uh, raptors. Everybody loves hawks, raptors. Um, you were mentioning there's a there's a raptor program in, in Europe over there. Um, Red-tailed hawks are very common year-round here. Uh, and I have this picture uh, in Brooklyn Bridge Park of one perched right over the path. And yes, people were walking right under it, not realizing, <laughs> even though I had my camera. Um, and th that was a picture from the same, same bird, just right, yeah. This is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. You can look for these soaring um, a lot of times, like over, they soar you know, along the piers or uh, over Brooklyn Heights a lot of times. The, uh, I think a lot of them live in downtown Brooklyn and they come over here and visit. 
Uh, if you hear crows cawing, that's a good sign that there's some drama going on. A lot of times they fight with the red-tailed hawks. They'll, they'll pester the red-tailed hawks. You would think it would be the, the opposite, but no. Um, they, they just, even though they're not living in these places necessarily, they'll still, if there's a hawk around, they, they want it out. They just, they just want to cause trouble. Now, American Kestrel is a bird we're going to be looking for when we go over to Erie Basin Park, right around the corner. This is uh, North America's smallest falcon. It's the size of a dove. And it hunts uh, insects and small rodents and small and birds as well. It hunts sparrows and warblers and things like that. Uh, and it's, it's hard to notice because, like I said, it's, it's very tiny, but I hope we see one. Uh, peregrine falcons are another bird. They were endangered. Uh, their eggs were not hatching due to um, pesticides, DDT, but uh, when those were banned and they did a reintroduction program, the city, New York City, now has the highest density of peregrine falcons anywhere in the world. I think London might be second, but don't quote me on that. But, um, and they hunt pigeons. So hey, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> they also hunt other birds, but um, there is a, an active nest on, um, on the Manhattan side uh, at Water Street, so right across from Brooklyn Bridge Park along the East River, and there's a webcam. If you Google 55 Water Street Falcon Cam, you can find that cam, but warning, it's very addictive, so I don't visit it anymore because I can't stop watching it. So, um, peregrine falcons visit uh, down here and all along the waterfront. Um, this photo was taken during the Christmas bird count a couple of years ago right over by Steve's Key Lime Pie, everybody's favorite. They do have gluten-free, I need to do gluten-free, and they offer gluten-free pies. Last time they were out though, but I hope they have restocked. Um, so yeah, so that was a parrot pot, just perched up there on, uh, I guess that's an old thing, uh, is that move containers or something? The criminal, I don't think it's active anymore, but it was a really beautiful setting. Um, so what about rare birds? Yes, we get rare birds along the Brooklyn waterfront. There's one right now, and I think I snuck in a photo. It's coming a little bit later. But the biggest rare bird we had on the waterfront was this painted bunting, which, as you may know, the you know adult male painted bunting is a tie-dye color. It's got colors. It's got red, green, blue, uh, yellow. Um, but the bird that, that I found here was, uh, it was a juvenile male which was more greenish yellow, but amazing. The bird was here for two months because it had a source of food. You know, when you think about these birds migrating through, this one got lost, but birds don't go south for winter because they're cold generally. They go because they keep, there's nothing for them to eat anymore. There's no insects, so they have to go down. Um, the birds that can stay during the winter eat berries, they can find stuff under the leaf litter. But this bird uh, was lost, it was totally out of range any, in any season, but it did find a great source of food in the native switchgrass, uh, which, you know, it looks like it's a bunch of weeds growing, but it's actually an important food source for these birds coming through. It caused quite a stir and had a lot of people visiting and um, they chose my glorious picture to put on the local news. <laughs> Waterfront rock star, the painted bunting. So it's, you know, it's great to hear about all these migrating birds passing through, but I'm sure you want to see them, right? So what can you see right now? What is in town right now? Different phases of migration happen. Some birds arrive early and then they're gone. Blackbirds arrive first. Uh, Eastern Phoebe flycatchers arrive, and then we move up and up to the scarlet tanagers, which are more in May, you know, things like that. So right now, I mentioned rare birds. There is a very rare bird at Brooklyn Bridge Park right now out of Pier 3. This photo was taken this morning. Uh, this is a fox sparrow, which in itself is not rare for the area, but it's a subspecies called a sooty fox sparrow that's only found in California or in Alaska. So somehow it wound up here. So there are a lot of birders over there. It's, it's causing quite a stir, very exciting. Um, another, and that's been there about two weeks. Uh, other birds to look for right now are brown creepers. They, they blend in with the bark. You can imagine if you're looking at it from behind, you know, it's gonna look like the bark. And they creep up the trees, then they fly to another tree, creep up, fly to another, creep up like a zigzag. Um, they're tiny and they support themselves with their tail as they scale the trunk. Uh, golden crown kinglet, tiny birds, they're always moving, uh, 
very, very cute. They're in town right now. And my favorite bird in the world is the white-throated sparrow. Um, this bird has been with us during the winter. That's why it's one of my favorites, because it's here all winter at Forages and Leaf Litter. Uh, and it's got beautiful colors, and it's got a gorgeous song. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this, but let's give it a try. Yeah, so, and it's singing right now um, out there in the park. So if you hear that, has anyone heard that song? Yes, yeah. So a lot of people hear the song and they're not sure what it is because these birds, they forage in the leaf litter on the ground a lot. So if you hear it, you know, like go ahead and look look for it. It's one of the most recognizable songs. Um, this, uh, you know, anything can be a source of fresh water for these birds after a rain, little puddles form uh, on logs or even in the grass, between the clumps of grass, I see birds bathing in there sometimes. Um, and to give you an idea of, of where this bird's going to be going when it leaves us uh, later, probably late spring, um, it's going to go up to the, uh, oh, this map is actually working. Okay, great. So watch. So this is its migration. It's going to go up to the boreal forests of Canada and breed. And then these are the months. So this is December. It's coming back our way. And it's going to hang out for a very long time. Um, but you see, that gives you an idea of how these, far these birds migrate. And when you, when you spend time with them, it's just amazing where they've come from, where they're going, and how they survive. The whole phenomenon of, of migration is why I think I love these birds so much, to see their struggles and how they do this. It's amazing. I mentioned Eastern Phoebe flycatchers, who are one of the earliest migrants. They're in town right now. They perch, they, they wag their tail or puff it up and down. So if you see something perched, um, wagging its tail, it might be an Eastern Phoebe. See this, it looks like there's fuzz on this. This is staghorn sumac, and uh, it's used a lot in, in our waterfront parks here. It's uh, a native, uh, and it's used in, uh, the fruit is used in spice, so these kind of torch-like fruits are gorgeous. Um, Yellow-bellied sapsuckers are in town. It's a gorgeous woodpecker. I saw two, I think they were chasing each other for about 20 minutes. It must, must have been some mating ritual. And then northern flickers, which how many people have seen northern flickers? They're, they're actually resident, they're here year round, but we get more during migration. Right now there's a lot more. October, there's also a lot more. In fall, we get uh, a lot of them. The ones here are yellow shafted flickers, which means the shafts of their feathers are yellow, so when they fly, it just looks like gold. And uh, the ones on the west coast are red shafted flickers. So, very different, like to see see the red shafts. I was out in Portland last summer, and I got to see some of those. Now, one of my one of my fondest memories from birding right around here was seeing uh, barn swallows collecting mud. This photo is from Brooklyn Ridge Park, but the same thing I witnessed right outside the door where the fire hydrant is. You'll see a tiny puddle. It's there right now. And uh, there was some mud in it, and the barn swallow was uh, gathering mud because it builds nests. So it builds nests in man-made structures or under piers uh, made out of mud and dry grasses. And I just couldn't believe just right here at the end of Van Brunt, you know, this is happening. I mean, amazing. So you never know where you can see this. I have quite a few slides of barn swallows because they just amaze me. They're found on every continent in the world. Um, they uh, come up here from South America and then when the young fledge, they're, they're waiting to be fed. You can see them all summer they'll be with us. Uh, and if you hang around and you see those babies begging, just wait wait a little bit and you'll, you'll see some feedings. And then near the end of the summer, if you see large groups of them gathering, I call this their South America trip planning meeting. Because at, once you see this, the next day, they're gone. I just, it's so weird. They're like getting ready and then they make the flight and uh, they're not here till next year. Now, common ravens are uh, actually not too common. They're, they're pretty rare, although recently uh, they're, they're a common sight along the waterfront. They are nesting at the Brooklyn Bridge on the, the Dumbo side tower for the third year in a row now. The nest is right there. They're incubating the eggs. They, they croak midair, so if you hear a croak uh, coming from above, take a look up, and if you see a large corvid with a wedge-shaped tail, you've got yourself a common raven. So um, 
the, the best place to look for birds, I did mention, you know, there was a barn swallow right out the door that can be wherever you are in the smallest patches. But to maximize your chances of spending time with these beautiful birds, you want to hit a birding hotspots, okay? So I work for eBird, I mentioned, this is a free resource. We, you can submit your data, um, submit your sightings, and it's all part of citizen science, which is used to inform conservation efforts and create those maps that I showed you. That's all based on based off data that people have submitted from, from all over North America and all over the world. We have those maps for all sorts of species that you can access online. But there's so many resources, I just want to touch on one, is how to find these hotspots. So if you go to ebird.org slash explore, you click on explore hotspots, um, type in your location, what did I type, Brooklyn, New York, and all these little points are all the hotspots around New York and the, the tri-state area and the, uh, the waterfront. Look at that, just amazing. Coney Island, the red are the hottest. It doesn't mean that others can't be hot, it's just those are heavily birded areas and there are a lot of reports. When I first started birding Brooklyn Bridge Park, it was, uh, you know, fewer species had been seen there, of course. But then it started picking up because I was looking at it, other people started looking at it, and now it's a big hot spot. Um, so if you click on one of those points, it will take you to, well, let me back up, bar charts, high counts, directions, but bar charts are a big one. If you go to bar charts, it'll have all the species ever seen in that hot spot, and it'll show you departure, arrival times, when can you expect these species. So for example, we see the yellow warbler, that little one that's been popping up, yellow warbler, that's, that's going to get here late April, be here in May, take off, and come back. So. For Brooklyn Ridge Park, for example, there's a, a, over 200 species, so I didn't put them all here, but you get an idea. You can see all the species, scan them, know when they're coming. So if you want to see like a yellow-billed cuckoo, for example, you can look it up here and know when to see it, know when to look for it. Okay, so specific uh, waterfront hotspots, I just want to name a few. Obviously, my patch, Brooklyn Ridge Park, is a great one. This park we're going to go to in a few minutes, um, Erie Basin Park, Ikea. It's a great location, especially in the winter. You get loons, red-throated loons, um, and like I said, there's kestrels. Killdeer also uh, are over there quite a bit. That's a shore bird that tends to hang out in parking lots. Um, and then Bush Terminal Pierce Park is another big one. And then we've got some other ones. Bushwick Inlet Park has over 100 species have been spotted there. Coney Island Creek, uh, I can't remember how many, but a lot of species have been seen there. Calvert Grove Park, Plum Beach. Uh, I don't know if it, has anyone been to Plum Beach? Yeah, it's it's hard, kind of hard to get to um, off the Belt Parkway, but a lot of rare birds wind up there for some reason. So you'll see um, a lot of birds showing up there, and it's a great place to bird. There's a lot of breeding birds out there as well. And Owl's Head Park, which I've never been. Has anyone been to Owl's Head? I I've never been there, but the list is amazing. There's so many birds that have been seen there. I gotta get down there. It's a huge hot spot. <coughs> So wrapping up, just um, I just want to point out that, I mean, there's always something new to see if you start taking a closer look at birds. You're going to notice uh, insects. This is a hummingbird clear wing. Uh, you might notice marine mammals. Someone spotted dolphins yesterday in the East River. Uh, I spotted a humpback whale up at Pier 1 like a few years ago. And uh, this harbor seal <coughs> in 2018 at Brooklyn Bridge Park. So that was on the kayak line kayak launch. And then uh, I was snapping away a bunch of photos and I happened to get, uh, I didn't know what I was getting, but this is a line seahorse. They're in the East River um, looking at a laughing bell. And, but even with all of these amazing sightings, I really love looking at the common birds doing crazy things. For example, crows go clamming when it snows because all the trash is covered up with snow. So you can see them clamming along the waterfront. Um, gray catbird eating pollen, yellow rump warbler, there's a bunch of insects here, it's just laughing them up, you know. And then northern mockingbird, which is pretty, very common, especially where there's lawns along the waterfront, and it looks like a roadrunner to me here, pretty crazy. But, um, so, I really hope that this talk has inspired you to take a closer look, um, and we're gonna go do that over at Erie Basin Park now, you don't have to join, but if you do, uh, I'm probably gonna spend an hour one, one bird I did not mention in the talk, but I want to mention, is the chimney swift, 
we see a chimney over here. I'm not sure if that's open, but the Pioneer Works one used to be. But basically these chimney swifts come up from South America. A lot of them winter in Peru. And they come up here and in the summer, you'll hear these birds chattering. They fly a lot right over here in this neighborhood. And it's kind of like, and you look up and they're, they're kind of like, a, um, they have slanty wings or curved wings and they're fluttering their wings. They kind of look like bats. But the chimney swifts, they roost in chimneys and nest. So they build um, with their saliva. They, I think, put sticks and stuff on the side of the inside of a chimney and build their nest there. They used to use hollow trees, but there are fewer and fewer hollow trees in woodlands now. So now they've gone to <laughs> chimneys, but chimneys are decreasing, right? A lot of places build swift towers which kind of simulates a chimney and it can be made out of wood and it's I think you can easily find plans for that online. Sometimes you know it can take a while for them to start using that tower or they never use it but it helps kind of replace the habitat that we're closing up. Northern Mockingbird right there. Uh, hopefully it will sing for us. They like to nest in evergreens like these cedars along here they're probably are working on a nest or have one already. They can have several nests. Oh look at that color you guys. Oh my god. The great black-backed gull is usually white with a black back when it's an adult. It's the largest gull in the world. Right here. Fly over us and say something. There it goes. Did you hear it? That's ring-billed gull, but you heard the... There's a herring gull there too. It's a little, it looks just like the ring gull gulls, but its head is a little different. To the left of the white gull in the middle. Most of these are ring builds. You see the whitish ones, they have the ring around the bill. Here's another black duck. Right in front of us. Bucklehead's So the female has a duller bill, and um, the male has the yellow bill. See that on the right? That's the male, the female is on the left. American black duck. You can see them year round too. They don't look very black, really. Yeah, they're more dark brown. Yeah. yeah. So since there's three black ducks here, the female's over there, this male is claiming ownership of that female and yet chasing this one away. <laughs> All right, should we head back?